Are you confused about which paper to attempt in your upcoming ECC exam? Are you wondering what is the best order to attempt these exams? Then this video is for you. Hello there future ACCs, this is Vishnu Vijay, a proud Fintrammer and I am here to talk about what is the best order in which you can attempt your ACC exams. So folks, when we talk about the ACCA course, we know that we have the flexibility to choose whatever papers that we want and to write it in whatever order that we want as well, isn't it? However, we still get a lot of queries from students which involves the question, which paper to do next? And this is exactly what we will be discussing. So what exactly is the answer to the question what is the best order in which you can attempt the ACC exams? The simple answer to this particular question is that it all depends upon your educational background, your skills and abilities. Well, that seems to be a curious answer, isn't it? However, let's deep dive into it, shall we? So folks, I believe that each and every student that we have here is unique in their own way, depending upon their educational background, their experiences, etc. And if you look at each of the levels of ACC, okay, folks, if we look at the knowledge level or the skill level or even the professional level, we have different types of students or different variety of students. Okay, folks, for example, at the knowledge level, we have students who are starting out with ACC after their 10th and 12th grade. And there are even students who are from a non-commerce background who are trying to, you know, become a chartered certified accountant as well, isn't it? And if we look at the skill level or even the professional level, there are students who have obtained exemptions in some of the papers and who are planning to start out with their first paper as well. So folks, so what we've done is we've considered all these categories of students. And then what we've done is we created pathways that each of these categories of students can take at each levels in ACCA. Okay, folks, so that is what we will be doing. Okay, folks, we'll be looking at each levels of ACC and we are going to understand what is the best order in which you can attempt each of those papers for uh, different categories of students. Okay, folks, and that can give you an idea as to what the uh, what your next paper should be for the upcoming session as well. So let's get started, shall we? So let's take a look at the first level, that is the knowledge level. As we all know, at the knowledge level, we have three papers. We have business and technology, management accounting, as well as financial accounting as well, isn't it? So in other words, we can also call it as BT, MA and FA. So what is the best order here? When we talk about the BT paper, it's like the basic theory or the understanding that you need to have in order to tackle every other paper in ACC. That's what the BT paper is all about. It's all about as to what the business is, how it works, and what are the least, latest technological aspects uh, that we use in the modern uh, industry, etc. Okay, folks, that's basically as to what the BT paper is all about. And when we talk about the second paper, that is management accounting, this is more of a logical paper rather than a theoretical paper. It ha does have certain theoretical aspects to it and you need to learn that. However, it's more on the logical side of books and it involves a lot of calculations and mathematical aspects to it as well. And then we have the financial accounting paper where we learn about all the journals, ledgers, financial statements, etc. Okay folks, so that's basically it's the basic accountancy. So, what is the best order to attempt these? At the knowledge level, I'm going to take up two categories of students here. The first category is the students who is just starting out at the knowledge level after their 10th or 12th grade. And this particular student is a commerce student. Okay, folks, the first category of student is a commerce student. And the second category of student is a non-commerce student, it's a student who is from a non-commerce background. This particular student may have taken, let's say, computer science uh, in their 12th grade and they may uh, be looking to, you know, transfer to the commerce field. It could be that. It could be such a situation. There are different other situations as well, but I'm not going to go through all of that. So let's say that the second category of student is, a, is from a non-commerce background. So what is the best order for each of these categories? I would say the first paper that each of these categories of students can take up is of course the BT, the folks or business and technology 
paper. Why is that? As I mentioned earlier, it's the basic of a business. You need to have an understanding of how the business works and the different technological updates in order to you know move through all the other papers as well. Okay, folks, I would just get started with this particular paper, and it's kind of easier compared to the others as well. Okay, folks, just to put that out there. Now, that's like the first paper, and what after that? Now, that's this is where the difference comes in. Okay, folks, for a commerce student. I would suggest after BT, take up the financial accounting paper. Why is that? Because the journals, ledgers are something that they're already used to, isn't it? So their 12th grade might have been full of these, uh, you know, uh, journals, ledgers, and financial statement, balance sheet, uh, or st statement of profit or loss, etc. So it's it would be they would be a bit more comfortable, or it would be easier for them to grasp all these concepts. Okay, folks, that is why after BT, the first category of students would take the FA paper. However, when we take a look at the second category, that is the non-commerce student. Okay, folks, if let's say they are from a technical field like computer science, or uh, if they are more into mathematical aspects like those, or logical aspects like those, then they, it, it would be more comfortable to take up management accounting before financial accounting. Because these students, the non-commerce students, may not have much uh, a great idea about the journals, ledgers, and balance sheets because it's new to them isn't it so it's always easier or it would be always motivating to take up the easier paper first so uh, i would suggest that the second category of students should take up the uh, ma paper after their bt okay folks and then after that of course they can take up the fa paper it is mandatory to do that isn't it so the order that i've suggested here is just to increase your motivation by attempting the easier paper first. Okay, folks, that's basically uh, why I've recommended these pathways. So, what is the uh, order for the uh, first category of students? That is the commerce student, it is BT, and, and then FA, and then MA. And for the non-commerce student, the, it's gonna be BT, MA, and FA. Okay, folks, that's basically the uh, pathway that I'll recommend here for the knowledge level. So. Now let's move on to the skill level, shall we? That, that could be a bit more interesting, isn't it? So let's take a look at the skill level. As for the skill level, we have six set of papers here, isn't it? There is the corporate and business law, performance management, taxation, financial reporting, audit and assurance, and financial management as well. Or in other words, we can call them as LW, PM, TX, FR, AA, and FM. So, what are these papers? Before getting into the order, let's understand the nature of each of these papers, shall we? First of all, we have the corporate and business law paper. And let me tell you guys, this is kind of similar to the knowledge level papers, where we have an on-demand exam. Okay, folks, we don't have to attend sessions uh, uh, like all the other skill level papers. It's an on-demand exam. You can write it whenever you want. As long as you have a you know have a booking in a registered CB center, of course. So uh, it's an on-demand exam, and all the questions are of an objective nature. But that what I mean is that you won't have to type in the answer in a word processor or a spreadsheet. Okay, folks, you just have to select options here. That's basically uh, the nature of the law paper or LW paper. Okay, folks, so remember that. And therefore, it's kind of easier compared to all the other papers where there are case study questions as well, or in other words, subjective questions as well. Okay, folks, so remember that. And then we move on to the next paper that is performance management, which is the advanced version of the MA paper. And therefore, it is logical and it involves a great deal of calculations as well. But do not be misunderstood. The theory in this particular paper is also equally important. Okay, folks, in order to understand the meaning behind the numbers, you will have to learn all the theoretical portions as well. It's not just calculations. So just to give you a heads up regarding that. <clears throat> now, moving on to the next paper, we have taxation, which is yet again, a paper that involves a great deal of calculations. And of course, you will also have to remember a set of rules here as well. Okay, folks, so that's basically as to what this paper would be like. And after taxation, we have the financial reporting paper, which is, as you may have guessed, the advanced version of financial accounting. It's it again, the journals, ledgers, and financial statements. However, you will be learning about uh, most of the most of the uh, IFRS standards here, I, IFRS as well as IA standards here as well. Give okay, folks, so remember that. 
And of course, there is a lot of uh, interesting topics in relation to consolidation as well. That's basically how it is. It's basically accountancy, a bit more advanced version of accountancy than the FA paper. And finally, we have the uh, audit and assurance. Not finally, there's one more, isn't it? So yeah, uh, audit and assurance. So what is audit and assurance all about? Well, we learn how to prepare the financial statement in FR. And in AA, we learn how to audit that to identify the errors in that. Okay, folks, because as auditors, what we do is we uh, go to an organization, take a look at their financial statement and point out if there is anything wrong with that or not. Okay, folks, that's basically it. Of course, you will be learning about all the details when you learn the paper itself. But just to give you an idea, it is not a theory paper. It is not a paper that involves a great deal of calculations. It is known as a practical paper. Why do I say that? Because in this particular paper, you will be given a scenario and you need to act as an auditor. Okay, folks, you should just follow a set of rules. There's a lot of structure to it. Yeah, that's basically how this paper works. And another key point that you have to remember regarding this particular paper is that you can only attempt audit and assurance or you have to attempt the audit and assurance paper only after the financial reporting or FR paper. Okay, folks, remember that key point. Why do I say that? Because the IFR standards that you learn within the FR paper is also tested in the AA paper. That is exactly why. Okay, folks, so remember that. That's a key point that you have to remember. So do not, uh, you know, try to attend the AA before FR. You can either, you know, attempt it either with FR or after FR. So keep that in mind. And finally, we have the financial management paper as well. When it comes to the FM paper, it's kind of similar to PM as well. Okay, folks, the concepts are different. Yes, I know that. However, <clears throat> the logical, okay, folks, this particular paper has a, is basically all calculations and logic, just like performance management as well. Okay, folks, in performance management, we're, you know, managing the performance of an organization, whereas in financial management, we're managing the finance of an organization. That's the basic difference here. But if I have to talk about the nature, both of these papers are logical and it has a great deal of calculations to it as well. And of course, theoretical aspects are also important. Okay, folks, so keep that in mind. So that is basically just a brief explanation as to what each of these papers are. Now let's talk about the order. When we talk about the order in which you can attempt these exams, I would say it's kind of similar to what we've discussed in the knowledge level as well. Okay, folks, so I can suggest two pathways here. And I do understand that there are students who have completed the knowledge level as well as there are students who have obtained exemptions uh, for the knowledge level as well. Okay, folks, so I'm providing two pathways for both these categories. Okay, folks, and you can choose your favorite one. And of course, you can make slight adjustments as well, okay, folks, depending upon your situation. So what are these two pathways? I'll tell you something that's common in both of these pathways is that the common factor is that in both the pathways, the first paper is obviously the corporate and business law paper. Okay, folks, that should be the first paper. Why is that? I've already explained that. Okay, folks, it's, the, it's a bit more easier compared to all the others. And of course, it's an on-demand exam, so we can just get it done and dust it quickly, isn't it? So that's basically the reason for that. And after that, okay, folks, in pathway one, let me explain that first of all, shall we? In the first pathway, after the law paper, I would suggest the calculation-based papers. Okay, folks, PM and FM, and then taxation, and then FR and AA. Remember, guys, only attempt AA after FR. That's the only mandatory thing that I would suggest. And of course, you can you know rearrange the things depending upon your interest as well. Okay, folks. So that is basically the first pathway. So in the first pathway, I'm just prioritizing the. Uh, the papers of a logical as well as calculation nature, okay, folks, or, or of a technical nature rather than accounting nature. That's basically the uh, difference between these two. And when it comes to the pathway two, you might have guessed, after the law paper, I would go for the financial reporting as well as audit and assurance. Okay, folks, it's kind of great if you do, the, do these two together or, uh, you know, one after the other. Okay, folks, remember that. 
and after that i would go for the taxation paper and then uh you know pm and fm okay folks that's another uh logical flow that i would follow as well so you have these two options so you can just choose from any uh, of these two options as well okay folks and it's suitable it, it all depends upon your interest okay folks if you're more interested towards the accounting side of things then definitely go for the second pathway whereas if you're more interested with the you know logic and mathematical kind of things then you can definitely choose the pathway one okay folks and remember guys the key concept that i'm using to create these pathways is that let's get the easier papers done first okay folks that's basically the approach that i'm taking here because the more papers you have the more motivated you will be okay folks so that's basically all about the order in which you can attempt the skill level papers now let's get to the advanced level shall we so let's talk about the professional level papers so folks in the professional level how many papers do we have we have six set of papers and we only have to mandatorily write four out of these six why was that well that's basically because we have two essential papers here that is the strategic business leader and strategic business reporting sbl and sbr and then we have four optional papers and we just have to write two out of these four isn't it so that's basically the idea here and what are the optional papers again we have advanced financial management or afm we have advanced performance management apm advanced taxation atx and advanced audit and assurance that is triple a okay folks so that's basically the set of papers that we have so let's quickly dis discuss these papers and then get to the order shall we so the apex paper out of all the other acca papers would be sbl or strategic business leader why do i say that well it's the advanced version of your bt paper which you learned in the knowledge level however it also has some elements of uh, performance management as well as financial management as well as audit as well okay folks so it's a mix of all the other papers okay folks uh, that's basically uh, the primary feature of this and it's kind of has a, a big uh, i would say technical knowledge compared to all the other uh, papers as well okay folks so that's basically the key aspect to it now moving on we have the strategic business reporting as well which is basically uh, the advanced version of your FR paper. Okay, folks, you will learn some additional advanced IFR standards. And of course, you will have to learn how to practically apply these standards in different set of scenarios. That's basically that's what the SPR paper is all about. AFM is the advanced version of your financial management paper, and which is yet again a technical paper. You have to follow some logic to it, etc. Okay, folks, and there are a lot of calculations, of course, yes. Okay, folks. And after that comes APM, which is yet again 50%, I would say, discussion and 50% calculations. Okay, folks, that's basically the nature of your APM paper. And it's kind of a creative paper as well, let me tell you that. And after that comes ATX, which is kind of similar to taxation. Of course, it's advanced taxation. So you will learn some advanced concepts. You will learn about tax planning, tax advising, etc. And of course, it's kind of calculate. It's all about calculations as well as uh, you will also have to provide some advice regarding tax related aspects as well. Okay, folks. So that's basically what this particular paper requires you to do. And finally, we have AAA, which is the advanced level of audit and assurance. Okay, folks. So that's basically it. Okay, folks. That's basically as to what the uh, set of papers are all about. Now, what should be the order here? So when it comes to the order for the professional level papers, truth be told, there is no uh, order that I can provide you here. Okay, so don't get too dissatisfied because even though I cannot provide you with an order like I pro like what I provided you with in the skill level or knowledge levels, I can provide you with some good recommendations as well. Okay, folks, or I would say good suggestions as well. And the suggestions would be regarding uh, the first paper that you should take or the approach that you should take etc okay folks now this recommendation is based on two categories of students okay folks the first category are those students who have attempted the skill level exams and the second category of students are those students who have obtained exemptions okay folks so let's talk about the first category of students shall we so when it comes to the first category of students the first paper that they should take 
is the advanced version or it should be the advanced version of the last skill level paper that they have attempted for example if they have uh, if their last e uh, skill level paper was fm then they can uh, you know take up afm as their first professional level paper if it was pm then they can take up apm as their first paper okay folks if it was taxation then atx however there's a slight exemption to this particular rule and the exemption is that if your last paper was audit and assurance then you cannot directly take up AAA. Why exactly is that? Well, that's basically because just like in the skill level, what did we do in the skill level? We, we've taken up audit and assurance right after or along with FR, isn't it? So the same goes for the professional level as well, okay folks? So when it comes to the AAA paper, you can only attempt that particular paper along with or after the SBR paper. Okay, folks, why is that? Well, the SBR level IFR standard knowledge is mandatorily required in the AAA paper. That is exactly why. Okay, folks, so remember that. So that is basically the idea here. That's basically just a suggestion that I have for uh, students from category one. And of course, the remaining paper is, is something that you can choose on your own. There's no uh, such uh, uh, strict order that you can follow. However, I could provide you with some other uh, suggestions as well. Uh, but before that, let's address the categories two students as well, shall we? So for the category two students, I would say that uh, for you guys, you know, guys, you can just uh, take a different approach uh, than what we've taken for the uh, skill level and knowledge level papers, okay, folks? So the skill level and knowledge level, we got done with the easier paper first, isn't it? However, since you are new to the ACC related concepts and uh, maybe even standards as well, you can get started with the essentials and then move on to the optional papers. That's something that I would suggest as well. And it would be great if you could get started with SBL itself. Why exactly do I say that? Because as I suggested earlier, SBL is basically a mix of some of the skill level papers along with some advanced topics as well. Okay, folks, that's basically as to what it is. And if you have a good understanding of the SBL concepts, then you're good to go. Okay, folks, so I would attempt the SBL as my first paper, or if I'm more interested in accounting and related aspects, then I would go for SBR. Okay, folks, so the essential papers should be prioritized first for category two students. Okay, folks, so remember that. And then after that, you can you know choose the optional papers depending upon uh, the paper that you've chosen. For example, uh, if you choose in the SBR, then after that, you can choose the AAA and then move on to SBL and the rest of the papers, just like category one. Or in another way, you can also, you know, uh, go for any of the other optional papers as well, depending upon, it all depends upon your options, okay, folks, and your interest. Okay, folks, so that is basically an order that I can recommend for the professional level, okay, folks. But it's not just that, don't worry. I can also suggest a few good combinations as well, okay, folks. Well, basically two combinations as well. The first combination is something that I've already communicated, SBR and AAA. This can be, uh, you know, if you are interested in taking two subjects as one, these two are a good combination. And of course, uh, both of these go go well, uh, you know, in an adjustant, adjustant manner as well. Okay, folks, you can take AAA after SBR as well. Now, uh, another good combination would be SBL and APM. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing these together because SBL on its own is a vast syllabus. So I wouldn't uh, you know, recommend taking both of these at once. However, you can take it uh, you know, uh, one after the other as well. Okay, folks, so you can attempt the APM paper after SBL as well. That's something that I would suggest. Why do I say that? Well, that's basically because we have some models and some, uh, you know, strategic concepts that are similar in both these syllabuses. Okay, folks, but remember guys, don't get uh, misunderstood here. Both these subjects are different concepts. Okay, folks, SBL is more uh, focused on the strategic thinking capability that you have, whereas APM is more focused on how you can use the strategic thinking capability to improve the performance of a business. Okay, folks, that's basically the primary difference here. So, 
Maybe I should make a detailed video out of the optional papers as well. Maybe I will do that someday. Okay, yeah, that's basically uh, the combinations. These two are some good combinations that you can adopt uh, while planning for the exam. Okay, folks, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular session. And I hope now you have a better understanding as to what your next ACCA paper should be. If you still have some questions, it's totally fine. Feel free to shoot them in the comment section and I'll be happy to take those up. Okay, folks, so stay tuned for more informative videos. This is Vishnu Vijay signing off for now. Thank you.